Welcome everyone in another video related to the force vectors, which is the second chapter from the book of engineering mechanics, the aesthetics part by the R.C. Hibbler. In this problem, we are being asked to determine the magnitude of the components of F1 force along the U and V axis. This problem is very similar to the one that we have solved in our previous video, which is problem number six, where we have determined the the magnitude of the resultant and its direction but in this problem we will be resolving the f1 force into its component in the direction of u and p so let's solve this problem considering the object on which the f1 force is applied these are the axes which is being given to us u and v these axes makes an angle of 75 degrees with each other. The F1 force have a magnitude of 4 kN and makes an angle of 30 degree with the V axis. Now let's say that the component of F1 in the direction of V is this one. Let's represent that component as F1 in the direction of V. Here another component will be in the direction of U and let's say that this is the component of F1 force and let's write that as F1 U. Now when we say components, those components are the one if we join them together or if we determine the resultant of these components, the resultant will be the same F1. In other words, I can say that if I place uh, one component to another component to form its resultant, it will be actually in the direction of F1. So I place uh, F1 U on F1 V. Like if I place the tail of the F1 U on the head of the F1 V, the, the closing side will actually be the resultant. This is what I wanted to say. This is F1 V and this is F1 U. So the closing side is actually the resultant. So in this way, we have actually a triangle where the two sides are F1 V and F1 U and the third one is actually the F1 itself. Now when we have triangle, then we can easily apply the sign law to determine the magnitude of uh, these uh, components. But for that we need to know the interior angles. One of the interior angle in this triangle is known which is 30 degree. But we are not known with the other angles. But we can easily determine those. Now let's see how we can do that. Now if we look here, the total angle between U and V is 75 degrees. So on the other side it will also be 75 degrees. So if this is 30 degrees, so the remaining angle would be 45. This angle is 45 actually. Now we can see that there is one line which is U line and there is another line which is being caused by this F1 U. You can see those two are parallel and there is another line, the resultant is crossing those two parallel lines. The opposite angles would be same. It means if this is 45, this will also be 45. And we know from the basics of uh, geometry that is the summation of the interior angles in a triangle is equal to 180 degree. So this 30 and 45 makes 75 degree. So if I add 105 degrees with 75, it will make 180 degrees. It means this angle is actually 105 degrees. Then. Now we know all the interior angles. Now we can easily calculate these two unknowns. So let's say if I take this 30 degree. So sine 30 degree divide by the magnitude of the opposite side and uh, the opposite side in this case in case of 30 is actually F1 U. So F1 U. Now in case of F1 which has a magnitude of 4 kN the opposite side is 105 degrees. So sine 105 degrees will be divided by 4 kN. So in this equation where we can see that there is only one unknown which is F1 U. So on simple calculations we are going to get the value of F1 U as 2.5. 0, 7 kN. In a similar way, we can have F1 V if we take the angle of 45 degrees. So sine 45 degrees will be divided with the opposite side. In case of 45, the opposite side is F1 V. Now this is equal to sine 105 degrees divided by 4. On doing simple calculations, again we are going to get the value of F1 V and that is equal to 2.93. So these are the answers to which we were looking for.
So this is how the calculations would be done when we are being asked to resolve a force into its component and those components are not the rectangular components but the components where the axes are actually being given in this case it was u and v axis those were not the rectangular one like x and y axis so in this problem we have learned like how we can cope up with such type of problem so this is all from this video. I believe you have got now got the concept regarding resolving the force into its component along the axes, which are not the X and Y axis, but the axis which were given. Like in this case, it was given as U and V axis. I tried to make things easier for you, but uh, if you still think that there is something that you could not get, then please let me know through the comment section so that I can get back to you. So that's all from this video. Thank you for watching this video. I hope to see you next coming videos. Till then.